So before I start off this video, I definitely want to say a few things about this video because I feel like uh, otherwise the headlines are going to read Swole Axe, big drama. And I'm not really for trying to start any big drama or anything. I just have some critiques and have some uh, things that I've been thinking about when it comes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series. Now, first things first, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I feel like that's very well understood, but I just want to get that out of the way. The next thing is that I really do like this series. I think it's pretty tight. And I love what it's been doing for the Yu-Gi-Oh community as a whole, getting players back into the game, exploring the different sets. I think this is a pretty neat idea and a great concept. Plus it involves two of the coolest dudes inside of the entirety of the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And though I love all my homies, I'm 100% on team Gage. Nim Nim for the win, Nim. Unless I think Alex Simo or Simo is a great guy. I love what he's done with this channel in terms of bringing information to the Yu-Gi-Oh community and it's clear that he has a passion and a respect for the game. And I didn't think I needed to clarify any of those things, but I wanted to do it just before someone in the comments was like, oh, MFG, Swolax, big drama. Is Dabin still cool? No? Tight. Yo, what's up, boys and girls? It's Miss Fox here and I'm back editing with a video this time, something different. Today, let's talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series. The Yu-Gi-Oh progression series is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It is a progression of Yu-Gi-Oh in a series. Originally created by the YouTube channel CMO by Alex CMO. This series is a love letter to deck building, challenges, pack openings, and also dueling history. Not to be confused with the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is his other series, which is kind of similar. But at the start of each video, CMO explains what the premise is. The premise is essentially that these two players will be opening up packs from different sets inside of Yu-Gi-Oh's history and building and growing their decks based off the ban list at that time, et cetera, et cetera. This series is incredibly popular, and if you're watching me, chances are you've probably seen this already. But if you haven't already, I recommend checking it out. Link will be in the description down below. The neat thing about the series is that there's storylines. You're always trying to follow up week to week to see what happens. And recently, it's been having a big moment. No, not a C moment. In fact, it's more of a Nimsident, actually. The series has been having this big moment recently where more and more people are starting to kind of get in on the action. As more and more players enter the online sphere, specifically around more Yu-Gi-Oh! influencers and Yu-Gi-Oh! tubing space, this series has become the biggest meme and also, for me personally, the biggest frustration I think I've ever had with Yu-Gi-Oh! content. <laughs> Dear Lord. This is not going to be just one issue, it's going to be a few different issues, but that doesn't make as good of a title or thumbnail. Don't hate the player, hate the game. So, these are not in particular order in terms of importance, but I will comment on one of them that actually kind of inspired me to make this video. So one of the critiques I have of the progression series and one of the problems that I think it has, in a 1v1 format of a draft series of this caliber, it's gonna eventually suck really bad, especially for one person. Even if it was the flip side where Alex was losing a lot and Gage was winning a lot, I think these problems would still arise. The issues would still be there just because of the nature of the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series. Watching through the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series, this all seemed very natural at first. It starts out actually fairly simple and starts getting really, really good. But obviously there were rule changes made to accommodate for, there was inherent flaws with the system. But the problems and critiques that I've seen, I don't necessarily think could be changed unless they're just wide sweeps. Why the 1v1 starts to eventually suck is that it's very slow at first, but then becomes an absolute landslide when it's clear that someone just has better cards. This makes this incredibly luck dependent and dependent on the ban list itself to kind of help bail out, you know, the person who is under that landslide. Right now that's Gage, but again, if it was Simo, then these rules would still apply. These kind of imbalances lead certain players to think that they only have one way out, or if they just didn't have this, or if they just had a counter to X thing, then of course they could be able to win. It creates this 50-50 where it's like, if you have it, you got it. If not, you lose. And if a new ban list goes into effect during the series, then effectively the person who's losing could get bailed out instead of using their own deck building prowess to win. And I'm not saying that that shouldn't be a thing. The ban list just in general shouldn't be applied because obviously it should. But sometimes it does mean that we're going to be getting long stretches and long periods of time where just someone just loses. Especially in the 1v1 format because the cards are so limited between the two people. It's not like you can re-roll for packs or it's not like you can just build from other things. Because they're using just straight core sets, it's interesting because they don't have access to other uh, support from side sets or structure decks 
but it again creates this power imbalance where the core sets of Yu-Gi-Oh are meant to be complemented by those things. So overall, the deck building being limited is more of a hindrance than really the cool feature. It's like kind of half-baked in a way. But conversely, I think it does get too complicated if you're trying to add those things into or trying to explain the rules of being like, well, they can pick one structure deck or they can also pick one couple packs of side sets or yada, yada, yada. It gets a little too jumbled. So again, understandably why that's not necessarily a thing. Like I've been saying in a 1v1 format like this, eventually it's just gonna, the pendulum's just gonna swing and it's just gonna stick over there. It's not gonna come back for a long time unless something big happens. And at that point, it does get exciting to see what could happen from the underdog's perspective. Right now, be engaged, but again, if it's SEMO, same rules apply. My solution to this problem is actually a fairly messy one, if that makes any sense. If you were just to fix the 1v1 problem with the progression series, it would be to add more people. I think having a small pool of four people involved with pro the progression series makes this kind of a really interesting thing. Well, number one, the videos could be longer, which is much more engaging content for a lot of people. It's like an ebb and flow and how to really balance and manage that. And I don't want to get into that inside of this video, but I think with, again, you know, with a small tournament of four people that can make for much more interesting deck play. Essentially with having more people, you get more opportunities to have different or varied decks, or sometimes you have the exact same deck. So instead of just a 1v1 of Frog Monarchs, you get to see like this one person took out three other Frog Monarchs. That's actually sick. This person's the God of Frog Monarchs, the Monarch of Frog Monarchs, if you will. And in a small tournament thing, you get more people involved and it brings more people in the community. I think with four people, you also bring on more diversity in decks and you're also not necessarily going to have a one-to-one -one counter. You can just like kind of pick a counter or try to pick counters to the person and yeah, that's a 50-50, right? That's, that creates another 50-50 amongst a series just full of 50-50s. But with four people, you have to account for maybe what they're building. You, essentially, you create this little meta inside of the progression series versus just having one person that you have to outthink, which I get has its appeal, but at this point, I'm like, the brain trust of YouTubers and streamers is, is just trying to defeat Thanos Simo at this point. And that's a great transition into number two, my second, problem with the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series, and that is the Streamer Avengers. One of the reasons why I think the progression series is having this big moment right now is because everyone's trying to team up to help Gage take down Simo. <laughs> And it's both one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen, but also one of the cringiest things I've ever tried to watch. This is gonna sound kind of mean, and again, I'm not accusing anyone or trying to target anyone in particular. It kind of goes over like a general blanket thing that I just somewhat am not a huge fan of in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, and that's like, we get the trickle down gamer slang, we get sheesh, we get I'm sickened, we get you're cracked, bro. We get a bunch of like things that I already hear too much in my plat games with Valorant. I don't necessarily need to hear them inside of Yu-Gi-Oh when I'm, when I'm doing a duel. And again, like I said, it's not particularly targeting anyone. I hear it all the time. When I've gone to my locals, I hear things like, yo, man, you got the goo? Oh God, yes. And like things like that. And I'm just like, can we not today? Anyways, back on track, the streamer alliance. So outside the fact that it, it can get really cringy at times hearing like 70 streamers come into one Discord call, um, I also think that it's kind of not fair. And unlike the other issue that I have, this one is just related to Nim Nim and not to Simo because you can't actually flip this reasoning around uh, because Simo doesn't stream. Simo doesn't necessarily publicly stream. Like he does some things in collaboration with other YouTubers, but for the most part, he just like stays pretty solitary. And the reasoning does make sense. You know, he wants to spend more time on videos and other things that are just much better uses of his time, which I totally get. But it does kind of create this imbalance to where Gage's whole entire deck profile and deck building process is getting streamed to hundreds, if not thousands of people on a weekly basis. This is a somewhat new thing, of course, because we have people like Pack TCG coming in to help out Dis Distant Coder, MBT, yada, yada, yada. Everyone just kind of wants to see the big Titan Simo get knocked down a peg and lose at least just one week. Gage just needs one win. And this is where the part where I really have to preface the fact that I'm not accusing Simo of stream sniping or cheating or doing whatever because it's not that big a deal, bro. It's just like a video series. It's it's fun content. It's supposed to be for fun. It's not like a real thing. Even though I prefer Team Gage, 
It's hard for me to feel bad sometimes in the weeks that he loses because like, I mean, the whole entire deck profile is like shown straight up the strategy, straight up the testing. And while I don't necessarily think Shimo is wasting his time watching these, taking notes, doing whatever, it's it's like in the just a, a, a general principle sense. It's like showing your hand in poker and expecting your opponent to lose. Let's say for example, in poker, you're in a 1v1 scenario, all five cards are out and you know your opponent's hand, like not just like, I think I have him on a Jack 10. No, you. he straight up flipped over his cards and is showing you and telling you this is what he has, but he does not know your cards. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you could play that well? <laughs> if you don't fold, if they have a better hand than you, or if you don't raise them out of your mind because you got pocket aces and you hit an ace on the flop, they have Jack squat, then I don't know. The main difference between that example and the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series is the fact that you can change out your deck and you can kind of uh, tune things week to week and yada yada. It's not like in my poker example where you know what cards they're playing and then you can be like, oh, well, I'm just gonna you know pick up cards from the deck. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but conceptually the idea is that if I know every single card my opponent's playing, if I know all of their strategies, then you can kind of see where I'm going with this, right? And because Simo doesn't necessarily stream or reveal a lot of this information, it does make an imbalance to where Gage is kind of like guessing what he's gonna do, whereas at any point in time, Simo could just log on to Twitch or go on to YouTube or go on whatever and see like, oh, okay, he's gonna be playing this. I could play something else, yeah, I don't know, let's just see. Again, I'm not saying that Simo is doing this every single time or week to week or taking notes or being a nerd. I'm not saying that at all. And it's also, once again, not that big a deal. It's just a video, bro. However, from a competitive standpoint, it doesn't necessarily matter how many Avengers you bring in if Thanos can still snap his fingers. You know, that's, that's, all, I'm, that's all I'm kind of, try, kind of trying to say with this. Okay, let's take a breath. Let's take a breather. That was a lot. And before I get to my final point, I just want to say, don't think about this video too much. I'm just kind of ranting. Anyways, my final critique, my final point that I want to make about the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series is that I wish that it was either Remote Duel or IRL. Now I understand that IRL can't necessarily happen yet. Like a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series that are online, I just like, I don't know, something about watching it on Dueling Book all fold out is a little bit less engaging to me, unless it's done well, unless it's like a highlight reel or if it's something really entertaining. And I don't necessarily think that all the series in the Yu-Gi-Oh! verse or every single person needs to go out and buy these cards or take plane tickets that's really expensive and just completely unreasonable. And this critique is, Honestly, just not the biggest deal at all. It's just kind of a small gripe I have. I think about a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series that they're just like virtual, and I kind of wish that we'd have a little more physical card content out in the game. It is really just much more engaging for me personally, and as a viewer, I think it's much more hype. I think there are some exceptions to the rule, and the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series might be one of them, just strictly based off of cost. And I think that DZ's bulk challenge also kind of fits under this umbrella because uh, he explained it in a video, essentially when no one knows what any of the cards do, it's kind of just helpful to have them, you know, listed out right there instead of being like, um, okay, what, is, what does this one do again? So those are my major critiques with the Yugo Progression series. The first being that the one of you one format, I don't think will work necessarily long-term. Number two, the streamer Avengers and how that's all been going. And number three, the fact that it's not Armo Duel or IRL, but again, blah, blah, blah. It, probably not feasible, but a boy can dream. Now to wrap up this video, because I think it's getting a little long, I have one big change that I think would ultimately help the progression series completely. If you fix nothing else on this list, this one single change would fix everything. Maybe that's what I should title this video instead, is one, one, one fix to the progression series. And this is it. We're gonna go by fighting game rules in a set of two out of three. And instead of the two out of three, it actually goes week to week. You follow me on this one. The winner of one week has to play the same deck the next week. Now, before you pull out your pitchforks and throw tomatoes at your boy's face, let me explain. I think there's some exceptions to the rule, but essentially the core cards of the deck or the core engine of the deck has to stay the same. So if you're playing Frog Monarchs, you have to play a deck that would constitute still as Frog Monarchs or some hybrid variation of the deck that would incorporate those cards. Of course, you could update them with staples or other cards that you get from the other sets because you'd allow for some counterplay. Right now, it's just like a 50-50 guesswork of like whether Simo is gonna play this deck or not, whether Gage is gonna play this deck or not. But if we had it to where the winner of each week plays essentially the same deck the next week, we have a situation where the other person has to, to just to just beat them. And then it's up to the winner to defend the belt and just straight up outplay them with the existing deck. Like I said, you could update the deck, you could reimagine certain things with the deck, what didn't work, 
what will work, what could work for the cards that your opponent could have, but generally keeping the deck the same. In addition, the ban list would supersede everything. If the ban list made it to where the deck is just straight up not playable, then we could have a reset. Or if it's something to where the ban list takes out key certain cards, then of course, then the deck shouldn't no longer be used. There's like some small other tweaks, of course, but I think if we kept this change inside of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series, I think it would make it really interesting and much more interesting as it is now. Because giving knowledge to the underdog, to the loser of the week before, is just beneficial to the overall series. Because then we're put into a different 50-50, a good 50-50. There's a lot of things I think this would accomplish and overall I think would be a very welcome change to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series, but hey, what do I know? But that's gonna be it for today's video. What do you guys think of it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you guys like the progression series? Do you guys hate the progression series? Do you guys watch any other Yu-Gi-Oh series on the regular? Are you team Gage or are you just the spawn of Satan? Let me know inside the comment section down below. In addition to that, if you guys like this video, make sure to leave it a like. If you wanna see more, please subscribe. I got a lot more videos coming on the pipeline, so stay tuned for that if you would like to. But uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.